If you've been living under a rock for the past couple of days, you may not have known that James Paxton was in Seattle in the owner's suite at the Winter Classic. This was reported by Chad Day, who has reported on Paxton quite a bit in the past, and he said, great atmosphere today at T-Mobile Park for the Winter Classic. Free agent left-handed pitcher James Paxton spotted sitting in the Mariners' owner suite. But does Paxton fit with the Seattle Mariners in 2024? Do they want to bring back another guy who is very, very injury prone? And what would it mean if you were to bring back James Paxton? Would we see Brian Wu, Bryce Miller, Emerson Hancock, etc. traded. Let's talk about it a little bit. Chris Cotillo of MassLive.com had his 24 predictions for 2024 for the Boston Red Sox. And he said that Adam Duvall comes back, but James Paxton and Justin Turner sign elsewhere. He went on to say the Red Sox have talked to James Paxton about a return, but it looks like the Mariners are in play for him yet again. First, let's just talk about the fit. Does it make sense for the Mariners to add James Paxton when they already have a starting five that we think is going to be there at the beginning of the year? Maybe they need depth. They traded Marco Gonzalez, of course, Easton McGee and whatnot. It's probably not as good a depth as we want him to be. Right now, we're looking at Emerson Hancock as the first guy up. If, let's say, someone gets hurt or what have you, then we're looking at Darren McCacken, shout out Daydara, or Tommy Malone, or I don't even know if Malone's still in the organization. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who it could be. There aren't many people that you want to come up and start Major League Baseball games for you in 2024. So bringing in James Paxson could be a bit of a let's call it contingency package. That way you can maybe start Brian Wu in AAA to manage his innings or go with a six band rotation to manage innings that way. I'm not sure. And Paxton, we know, loves Seattle. Seattle loves James Paxton. It'd be great to have the Maple Grove back. So it makes sense in that regard. With that being said, I would assume James Paxton is going to make a decent chunk of change in 2024. And Ty kind of echoed this over on Twitter where he said there are a few things signing Paxton could mean that aren't necessarily a precursor to a pitcher trade. They really need depth. They could enact a six-man rotation to manage innings. Starting Wu in AA or AAA to manage him better isn't the worst idea either. So Ty agrees with me there. And then what he has to say next is very interesting. Ty went on to say, that said, given what the market has been, Paxton's probably getting 10 plus million dollars. That's a significant chunk of change of what we believe Jerry and co have left to spend. For that reason, I don't think they're pulling the trigger unless they have something lined up that makes Paxton more important. And honestly, Ty's right because the Mariners did just go out and sign Mitch Garver to a $12 million a year deal, meaning that if they only had $25 million to spend, they'd be right around 13 million left. Do you want to spend 10 million of that 13 million on somebody like James Paxton, who is often injured and hasn't completed a full season in quite a long time? I don't know if the Mariners would be willing to do that. With that being said, Ty also mentions it could be a precursor to some other move, whether that be moving Ty France and his like seven, eight million dollars, whatever it is he's getting paid. I'm not sure. Some sort of money saving move for the Mariners, although they've kind of shed all the payroll that they already could. You're not trading Luis Castillo. You're not trading Robbie Ray. First and foremost, if you guys are looking at those deals and saying those are bad deals, you're just wrong. We saw Lucas Giolito getting paid, what, $18, $19 million a year. Robbie Ray is leaps and bounds better than Lucas Giolito. And the market that we're seeing this offseason for starting pitching proves that. So Robbie Ray and Luis Castillo on this market right now would probably be making $28 to $30 million a year. Let's just put that out there. You're not going to trade them to save money, and those are your two biggest money makers right now. So where do you go to get that $10 million? I'm not sure. Maybe you then sign James Paxton, and that's like the last big money move you make, and then you're trading for a young controllable guy somewhere with Brian Wu or Bryce Miller. I'm not sure. But with that being said, Ty is spot on and saying that Paxton should get $10 plus million. There is a way around this, however. Let's talk about that a little bit later in the video. Let's just look at Pax over the past couple of years and how good of a pitcher he's been. In 2023, Pax started 19 games for 96 innings pitched. He went on to have an ERA plus of 101, just 1% above league average with a 450 ERA. Pax was healthy in 2023 for the most part. Before that, he hadn't pitched since 2021, back when he was with the Mariners, where he had a 6.75 ERA in 1.1 innings pitched. Everybody probably remembers Paxton coming in for a game at the beginning of the season in 2021, and, well, he got hurt in the second inning. It sucked to see. I was so excited to see him back. But, yeah, so that was the last time he had pitched prior to 2023. But there was a few years here from 2016 to 2019 where Pax was one of the better pitchers in all of baseball. He had an ERA hovering right around 3 to 3.8 is kind of where he was at, which is pretty dang good, all things considered. And he was throwing at least 120 innings a year. Not bad. 
He also had an ERA plus above league average with 140 in 2017 when he had a 2.98 ERA with the Mariners. Overall, James Paxton, he's 35 years old. You just don't know what you're going to get with him in terms of injuries. Looking at his baseball savant page in 2023, it was nothing super special, but of course his fastball velo was still pretty high, throwing around 95.2 miles an hour. His extension is one of the best in baseball at 79 percentile. In 2023, his strikeout percentage was around 24.6%, which was above league average. His walk percentage was also below league average at 8% compared to 8.3 for the league. Paxton's injury history is long and arduous, ranging from his knee to his hamstring to his elbow in 2022, his forearm in 2021, his glute in 2019, his knee in 2019, and his lower back inflammation in 2018. He's also had anything from... The injury that kept him out in 2022 was a grade 2 lat tear. At the time, he was recovering from the Tommy John surgery that he had when he was with the Seattle Mariners. So overall, does it make sense for the Mariners to sign James Paxton? Not if it's going to take a 10 plus million dollar a year deal. I think that he's only going to sign one year deals from now on. But with that being said, I would not be willing to give Pax more than like a seven year deal with incentives to maybe get him to that 10 year deal. But you need to have an incentive laden package for James Paxton because you cannot go out there and sign him to a deal that is $10 million guaranteed when you have such limited funds to play with. And then, you know, have the chance that he's going to get hurt after the first week or not even throw a pitch for you. And you're just out that $10 million when you have many other needs on this team. An incentive laden deal where if he throws 100 innings, he gets another million, 125, he gets another million after that, so on and so forth. You guys get the point. Then maybe I'm willing to do it. And honestly, if I'm looking at James Paxton and the addition of Paxton, what it would mean for this team, I would say that he is, let's say the Mariners did trade one of Miller or Wu, right, for the bats that they need, which they really should at this point with how good the pitching market is going right now. I think that James Paxton would be a placeholder until Robbie Ray got back, assuming everybody else stayed healthy. So Paxton would be that number five. Let's just say you traded Brian Wu. Paxton is that number five guy for you. And as long as he can stay healthy until the all-star break, all bets are off after that. Because allegedly, if Robbie Ray comes back around the all-star break and everyone's still healthy, Pax is not as big of a deal for you as he would have been had he needed to stay healthy the whole year. So if he gets hurt, oh well. But it is a bonus if he stays healthy the whole year, which again, incredibly unlikely. And maybe a six-man rotation is what Pax needs. Maybe that's what the Mariners need to do with James Paxton is have a six-man rotation where maybe then you're limiting innings for Brian, Brian Wu, but you're also limiting innings for somebody like James Paxton. I'm not really sure what the deal is here, but the fact that he was in Seattle at the Winter Classic sitting in the owner's suite obviously has some implications to it. I don't want to read too far into it. I'm not saying that James Paxton is definitely coming back, but there is something there. But for the Mariners in 2024, it's a big year for them. And we had some New Year's resolutions that I think the Mariners need to reach if they want to make it to the playoffs in 2024. Go ahead and check that video out next. I appreciate you guys watching this one and go Mariners.